What's going on YouTube? My name is Alex. This is Ask the Cheese Gaming. I am on a quest to review every single racing game for the Nintendo 64. A little over two years ago, I took a look, a look at Wipeout 64, only on the Nintendo 64. So let's revisit this game, give it a game discussion in this week's review, and see if maybe my opinion has changed about this game since I took a look at it last. Wipeout 64 was developed by Sagonosis and published by Midway with a North American release date of November 1998. Now, let me just get my first critique of this game out of the way immediately, which is that unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of game modes in this game. You don't have any Grand Prix or Circuit per se, instead you have challenges. And then of course your single player race, your time trials, and two player multiplayer, so let me load my file real quick. Okay, good, got it. So there we go. Alrighty. So, with challenges, you have race challenges, time trial, and weapon. Total of six. And of course, different difficulties as well. Now if you want to do a single person race, you have four difficulties, which are Vector, which is pretty much very easy, Venom, which is like normal, Repair, which is like just very hard, and then Phantom, you will never win another race as long as you live. So let's do a single race real quick. We'll do it on easy so I can talk while I play. And we'll pick a nice card here. Wipeout 64 is a futuristic racing game, which is a direct sequel to Wipeout 2097 for the PlayStation 1. And that was actually a sequel to just Wipeout, also for the PlayStation 1. Now, as I start off this race, I will say that the music and sound effects in this game are very enjoyable. I enjoy the sound of the bikes, I enjoy the sound of the weapons, the music in the background. It's all very enjoyable, fits the overall theme of the game perfectly. It's not extreme G levels of absolutely amazing for the music, but still thoroughly enjoyable, and I have no complaints about that. I definitely like the style that they went with. And we'll actually use some weapons here, so be able to hear those sound effects for those real quick here in just a moment. But again, my gr biggest critique really of this game is just the you know, just lack of content for like any Grand Prix or Circuit or anything like that. There's just not a whole lot in this game. However, I will say that if you have ever played this version on the PlayStation 2, or excuse me, PlayStation 1, and you enjoyed that port, I think overall you'd very much enjoy this one. A lot of the tracks and the levels are nearly identical, if not completely identical. Ooh, yay, we got a rear locking. Oh, that was a forward missile. I thought that was a rear locking missile. Hey, cool, we got a new lap record. Did we get a new weapon? Yes, we did. Of course, futuristic racing game. So you got a whole bunch of different weapons that you can acquire as you race. Object is to win the race. I either, you know, I guess you could pretty much say by hook or crook. You can try to wreck your opponents if that helps and with certain weapons that is possible. There we go. I prefer just to try to race better than they are and just beat them that way. Just to race a nice clean race. Now, let me get to my second nitpick of this game, which is that on higher difficulties, this computer is just absolutely cutthroat. I mean, there, I've tried so many times some of those challenges and everything else, and it's like, you know, I'll be like, well, you know, second lap into the race, and the computer will just completely blow me up and wreck me, and there's nothing I can do about it. And I mean, especially on the higher difficulties, I can never do, clear it. It's just, it's tough. So I don't know. Maybe I'm just horrible at these games. If you've beaten this one, feel free to comment below. But yeah, it's tough. 
Yep, okay. I guess we're just gonna leave that one blank. All right, so let's do another race. We'll go one difficulty up and try a different level for you here. Now, controls wise, this game is nice enough. I don't have any issues about that. All the cards are quite responsive. One weapon for, excuse me, one button for weapons. One to kind of air drift or air glide, as it were. One for the gas. It does take a little bit to kind of get the feel for how the futuristic vehicles move and kind of how they glide, especially if you're going off any kind of ramp. So keep that in mind. Now, where I'd say this game really probably shines is in its price charting price, which it currently has a price charting price of $11. So for a, you know, rather budget racing game and the Nintendo 64, it's not bad. It's definitely got some meat on the bone here. Are some things to enjoy. It's a nice kind of, you know, pick up and play for a few minutes, pop in a couple races or a couple time trials or maybe try to complete a challenge and then, you know, sit down and put away. But again, just not a whole ton to this game. I mean, once you've beaten, you know, if you've managed to clear through all the challenges, then that's, that's really it. There's nothing left to do. Except maybe I just go in with, you know, time trial and try to do better. Really? How did I, how did I go through him? I'm so busy talking and not paying attention to what I'm doing. I need to try to do better. But I just wanted to give a quick game discussion to wipe out 64. You know, as you watch me sit here and play this game, do you own this one? Have you played it yourself? Comment below, let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Let's finish out this race, and until next time. We almost had it. Till next time, everybody. If you have a request for future review, comment below.